Hi, it's Colin Coward. I started the volume to bring you some of the most authentic voices in sports. While you're here, make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks. I've been thinking a lot about Dak. And I, I talked about him yesterday that in a salary cap league, when you pay max money for a non-max player, it can it can really hurt you. Like in baseball, when the Yankees or the Dodgers, hell, the Giants, the Red Sox, when they make a financial mistake, when they give a guy $200 million and it turns out he's an $80 million player, ultimately, if they don't truly give a shit, it does not matter. They can buy the guy out later. They don't have to play him. They can pay other players. They have a lot of wiggle room. Now, when you see other you know organizations in the sport of baseball that are probably middle tier, because the lower tier guys never sign those type contracts. But every once in a while, the middle tier organizations splurge, and they buy a $150 million player. That guy better be sweet, because the moment that guy does not live up to his all-star billing, you're, you're screwed because they're not in a position to keep buying more players. Where in football, when you are going to invest in a guy at any position, you know, I, I had a buddy that's a season ticket holder with the Niners. He's like, you know, I've watched Joe Mixon a couple times this year, and I don't really see it. And this guy's really smart, finance guy, really successful. He's like, you know, $12 million is not adding up to me. He's like, this guy's actually worked in the NFL. And I'm like, I I'm telling you, Joe Mixon is really good. I know Joe Mixon has battled some ankle injuries, but when you look at his production this year, he had 42 catches, he had 16 total touchdowns. Like his ROI on his $12 million, you're getting what you need out of the guy. And sometimes as a running back, you just get banged up and you're not as good for a period of time. But to me, Joe Mixon was well worth paying $12 million. But when Dak Prescott and everything happened, and once he shatters his ankle and they pay him this offseason, my issue was not you you wouldn't want him as your starting quarterback. Had no issue with that. At the price point, though, given the salary cap, you you got to start working it like a puzzle. And you go, you know, $40 million for Dak Prescott seems kind of crazy. But the main issue is like, from a leadership standpoint, from the way the guys react to him, clearly he checks all the intangible boxes. But there was a reason he was a mid-round pick. Now, if you remember, I think the week of the draft, he got a DUI, so maybe he would have been a third-round pick, and he ended up going a fourth-round pick because he got the DUI. But he was highly thought of coming out. But his skill set was not, like talking about Mahomes and Josh Allen, when I think about two things, you have to have one of the two things, and he just lacks at quarterback, is one, like, I'm a sucker for strong arm guys. Now, just having a strong arm does not mean you're going to be a good quarterback. You have to have the requisite understand defense, understand your own offense, have football intelligence. I, I, If you have that, which clearly is a baseline for all the good quarterbacks, being able to read defenses, understand pressures, understand situations, like we're talking the highest level here. One, do you have a strong arm? Dak Prescott does not. And two, are you accurate? And I've watched Dak now in some big spots in the Arizona game a couple weeks ago, which I was on this podcast being like, oh, they're going to kick the Cardinals' ass. They lost. He wasn't very good. And that game against the 49ers, he was very inaccurate. So if you're not going to be a strong arm guy, really his skill set, people are going to get mad at this, is much closer to Alex Smith, who had a lot of success when he was with Andy Reid and even that latter year with Jim Harbaugh, because they used him correctly. Like they try to use, you would never use Alex Smith playing like Patrick Mahomes. There's a reason the Chiefs looked one way with Alex and they've looked dramatically different with Patrick Mahomes because Andy adapted the scheme to Mahomes. Well, with Dak Prescott, Kellen Moore, which is a little weird, I guess they threw it a lot at Boise. They spread it out. And they have really good wide receivers. But in these big games, he is not Mr. Big Arm Accurate Quarterback. So when you try to sling it all over the place, and this is why I struggled to, like, I couldn't get behind paying him $40 million because he's not accurate and he doesn't have that explosive of an arm. And you saw yesterday they really only took one shot and they hit it on Amari when he smoked the slot receipt or the slot corner K1 Williams, but they're not really bombs away cuz he's not a bombs away guy. So I do think like it's spilled milk, right? There's water in the bridge. The contract is the contract. He's not going anywhere. You do need to adapt the offense a little bit to his skill set. If you're going to ask him to throw it 45 to 50 times a game, 
against the top teams. We're not talking Joe Judge. We're not talking the football team. We're not talking the Eagles backup. We are talking the Niners, the Bucks, the, the Packers, the good teams for all the marbles. They have to play differently. That is not a formula for success. Now, when you look back at McCarthy's teams, he had Rodgers, who is infinitely better than Dak Prescott. But one of the reasons that Harbaugh got him twice, and then uh, even, I, I guess, McCarthy wasn't the team, but uh, but McCarthy lost a lot of big playoff games, is because they tried to play this spread offense. That's hard to play in the playoffs. Now, it wasn't because Rodgers couldn't sling it around. It was just harder to play in you know the inclement weather. With Dak, it's just they're playing in a dome. It doesn't even matter. He's not built to do that. He, he, he's You have to think of him much more closely to Alex Smith than I think the way that the Cowboys internally believe that he's that he is because he's just not that guy. It's just, to me, also kind of crazy. He's not that accurate. I watch a guy who's just not naturally that accurate, which if you're not going to have a big arm, that's a little concerning. Thanks for watching 3 and Out. You can check out the podcast below in the description. And make sure you subscribe right now to the Volumes YouTube channel.